It is well known that if you increase the focal length of a telescope, it dims the image, because it makes for a slow F ratio. And a slow F ratio doesn't transmit light as well, so the image is dimmer, meaning it takes longer to get a good exposure. So if you want to be able to shoot your images faster, you get a telescope with a low focal length and a fast F ratio, so your telescope will transmit light better and need less exposure time. And the only problem with all of this is, it's full of commonly accepted half-truths. A telescope with a high focal length transmits light just as well as a telescope with a low focal length, at least if they have the same aperture and optics of equivalent quality. But it is accurate to say that a high focal length telescope will produce an image that looks dimmer. And that's not because it doesn't transmit light as well, it's rather because it spreads light around. And that spreading around is what leads to magnification. And if you're confused yet, that's okay. When I first started reading about the stuff a long time ago, I was too. It's fairly counterintuitive, but I think we can sort it all out. Here's a simplified model of the schmidt cass grain telescope in the previous image. Since about one half the total length of the telescope in the previous image was only a dew shield, for simplicity's sake, I have removed it. Now let's say this SCT has an aperture of 200 millimeters and a focal length of 2000 millimeters. It's not exactly either in real life, I'm just rounding numbers again to keep things simple. So this telescope has a diameter of 200 millimeters. That is the circle in which light can enter. And from the point of entry at the corrector plate all the way back to the sensor at the back of the image train, the light travels 2000 millimeters. We can find our F ratio simply by dividing the focal length by the aperture. So the SET has a focal ratio of 10. And if we apply the typical interpretation of F-ratio that tells us this telescope is pretty slow or it doesn't transmit light very well, so it's going to need a long time to create an exposure. But let's see what happens to the light the telescope gathers. I'll point the imaginary telescope at a deep sky object and begin catching photons. Light travels from the DSO to the telescope where it enters through the corrector plate and bounces off the primary mirror where it is curved back toward a secondary mirror there, the light is curved again as it bounces off the secondary mirror and crosses over itself as it heads toward the sensor at the back of the telescope at the end of the image train. Notice that the light does not fall straight down onto the sensor. Rather, the light is spread out over the sensor. It is this spreading out that causes the effect of magnification. The light crosses over itself at this point here, and the rays move at an angle back toward the sensor. As they do, it's as if the image spreads. At the crossover point, it's infinitely small, or close enough for government work, as they say. And as we move along the rays from the crossover point, the image gets wider and wider till it reaches the sensor. Hence, it's quite literally spread out. How much the image spreads is how much it has been magnified. What happens in the spreading of the image is, ultimately, what causes many persons to come to believe that telescopes with high or slow F ratios actually transmit less light than telescopes with faster F ratios. However, a slow F-ratio telescope transmits just as much light, but focal length spreads that light energy out. Think of spreading butter on toast. You need the pat of butter to fit over the entire slice of toast, so you spread it out. As the pat is spread out, it becomes thinner than paper, but there's still just as much butter in the pat. So in the image, there's only so much light captured by the aperture of the telescope per unit of time. As it's spread out by the focal length, it becomes thinner and thinner. Or you might say that the light energy is dispersed over a larger area. What this means is there is just as much light energy in the signal captured by a high or slow F-ratio telescope. It's just been spread like butter on toast. However, if you were to capture that energy with a camera with a huge sensor and proportionately larger pixels, the high or slow F-ratio telescope would produce a bright image just as quickly as a fast F-ratio telescope. The larger pixels would pick up the energy of those very much spread out photons and be able to become bright just as quickly as if the telescope were a fast F ratio instrument. This, by the way, is one of the reasons why telescopes with long focal lengths do better with cameras with larger pixels. Let's look at the opposite situation, the performance of a fast telescope. A telescope with a low focal length and wide aperture gives a fast F ratio, which is to say that the images it produces appear brighter as if they have more light energy. Part of the way it does this is that it captures a wider field of view, so it's literally conveying more light energy down to the sensor. However, since we're usually interested in a single target, that wider field of view isn't necessarily useful, as it might turn our subject of interest into a mere tiny object within that broad field of view. Here's a perfect example where I'm trying to capture the hamburger galaxy using a telescope with a mere 447 millimeters of focal length. 
But the lower focal length of such a telescope is not spreading around the image so much either. So the light energy falling onto a camera sensor is more concentrated and an exposure can build up faster. But every action in photography has a price. With low focal length fast telescopes, the price is that while the telescope will quickly build up a good signal, the subject will be smaller, causing detail to be lost to scale. Whereas images taken with a telescope with a long focal ratio will need more time for photons to fall into the pixels and build up signal to noise ratio, and you'll need better guiding for that extra exposure time. But with patience and good technique, more detail can be extracted from the image. These two images I shot for illustration purposes in this video. However, if you want to see the true benefits of long focal length, take a look at this image from the JWST, which has a focal length of 131.4 meters. Yes, you heard that right. And that's the equivalent of 131,400 millimeters of focal length. If I were to shoot this nebula from my SCT with its focal length of 2,000 millimeters, it would look like this. As you can see, there is a reason NASA builds telescopes with extremely long focal lengths. Focal length might spread out light energy, but you can compensate for that with longer exposure time. Focal length gets you in there up close and reveals detail that is lost in the low scale of short focal length fast F ratio telescopes. Even if fast telescopes have a wide aperture, if they don't offer magnification, some detail will simply be lost to scale. Thus, it can truly be said that focal length has a quality all its own. Now, fast telescopes need a wide aperture in order to gather more light. And while long focal length telescopes don't strictly need a wide aperture, they very much benefit from it. Focal length might provide magnification, but aperture resolves detail. They say aperture is king, and there's truth to that because it's always better. Because if a long focal length telescope does not have the aperture to back up that focal length, it will not be able to resolve the detail that focal length could reveal. This is to say that if you're going to get a long focal length telescope, make sure it has a wide aperture as well. Otherwise, the focal length is wasted. Speaking of waste, let's cover one last area, the image circle. The image circle is the region at the back of the image train where the image from the telescope falls. That's where you're going to find the focus plane and where you'd place a camera sensor. The image circle of a telescope with a high focal length must be larger than the image circle of a telescope with a low focal length. After all, focal length spreads out the light and that's what causes magnification. Because the high focal length image circle is more spread out, a camera sensor may not be able to cover it all. Not unless you get a camera with a larger sensor. This has led some critics of high focal length telescopes to state that the high focal length is pointless because much of the image circle is wasted. At least unless you can afford the expense of a larger sensor camera, and they can be quite expensive. For example, a camera with a 1 inch sensor runs around $1,000 to $1,200 while a camera with a full APS-C size sensor typically runs a little more than twice that. However, waste is a relative concept. The vast majority of DSOs are distant and small, and will fit within the space of a 1-inch camera sensor or smaller. So if a small distant DSO is your goal, and you can fit it all into your sensor space, then everything else within the image circle that you're not really interested in is not wasted. It doesn't need to be there. Let's take another look at the Hamburger Galaxy as a case in point. It was shot with a low focal length telescope in the image on the left, and within the red rectangle that indicates the sensor, you'll find it to the upper left. If my goal for this image was only the Hamburger Galaxy, then all that extra field of view that was able to fit onto the sensor due to the lower focal length telescope's smaller image circle, it's wasted. In fact, some 99% of that field of view is wasted. Whereas with the high focal length telescope, if my subject, the Hamburger Galaxy, fits within the sensor and occupies much of it, and I'm not interested in all that additional background, then the much larger image circle that does not get caught on sensor is not wasted. It never needed to be in the image to begin with. And not only is much less of the field of view not wasted, but all the light energy of my subject of interest is being caught on the sensor. It's more spread out than it would be on a low focal length fast F ratio telescope. But regardless, all the energy is there. And that's what I mean when I say that waste is a subjective matter. This isn't waste, this is editing. Except, you're editing with your telescope and your camera sensor. A high focal length telescope allows you to edit out the field of view that's unnecessary and fill what your camera covers of the field of view with your subject of interest. And in fact, in the high focal length image on the right, the Hamburger Galaxy occupies about a quarter of the sensor. Meaning that in this case, the high focal length is making better use of the field of view and filling up more pixels with relevant energy. Since the light is more spread out in the high focal length image, it will take more integration time to get a good solid image. 
that is, an image with a high signal-to-noise ratio. But that additional focal length and additional time gathering information allows fine resolution of the structure such as the dust clouds within this galaxy. Watch what happens to the hamburger galaxy in the low focal length image on the left when we zoom in and bring it into the same perspective as the hamburger galaxy in the high focal length image on the right. Without the benefits of the higher focal length, the detail in the structures of the hamburger galaxy are lost to scale. They say aperture is king, but fundamentally what we see is that aperture and focal length reign together. Aperture enables the light gathering ability of a telescope, but it also enables the detail resolving power of a telescope. And while aperture can give us telescopes with very fast focal ratios, aperture without focal length is going to lose some of that detail to scale. Which means the astrophotographer will simply have to pick and choose wisely when selecting both their telescopes and their subjects. Thank you for watching. As always, I hope you learned something and perhaps you have thoughts or comments or different opinions. If so, please leave them in the comment section below. This channel is just growing insanely fast at this point due to everyone's support. At Presently at about 500 subscribers per month, I, I continue to be floored and humbled. Thank you for your interest. And I hope you continue to find quality content that is both accurate and useful. Now, the sky is clearing up outside and I'm expecting a pretty good night tonight. So it's time for me to get ready to get out there and shoot the sky.